For this question, I actually think that the algebra is really, really easy. Easier, in fact, than graphing it, but it requires a piece of memorization that I think that a lot of people just have trouble with. So let's just assume you know nothing and you were given this question, what would you do? Well, we're asked for the minimum, you know what that word means, I hope, and we have a, an equation, let's just graph the equation. And we can see it in the standard kind of format here, it looks like a line, but you can see it, it's kind of curving. And if we zoom out, we're gonna be able to see where that minimum is, right? It's a parabola, so we're looking for the vertex. And luckily, if we just tap it, we're gonna get it. So seven, negative 27 is the vertex. And they're specifically asking us for what value of x does it reach its minimum? So make sure you don't kind of misread the question. They're asking for the vertex, but you only enter one of the points. And, the, and they could have asked it slightly differently. They could have asked, um, what is the minimum, right? For what is the minimum value of y? But that's not what they're saying. They're asking for the x. For what value of x does it reach its minimum? So seven is our answer here. Um, because I think it's so easy, I am going to show you the equation that we would use to solve this algebraically. Uh, even if it's not what you use here, it is a, a question, an equation that you very likely will need on harder questions. So it's something that you should memorize. Um, you probably learned this as the axis of symmetry formula, but for me, it's always more useful as just the formula for the x coordinate of the vertex, and it is negative b over 2a, meaning when we have a, an equation, a, a parabola, in this format, ax squared plus bx plus c, I can pull out the, the right numbers and kind of use them to solve this. So in this case, it's written in that format. All I have to do is pull out the numbers. So negative, and there's, be careful here, b is the, the number attached to the x, so it's negative 14. So there's a double negative here. And then 2a, well, there's no number attached to the x squared, which we mean, which we know means that the number is a 1, right? We don't write the 1, but it's there. So now that's just negative negative 14, which is 14, over 2 times 1 is 2, and so there's the 7. And in this case, we wouldn't necessarily know the y coordinate just by using this formula, but we could get it by then taking that 7 and plugging it into the equation and solving. So even if uh, we were asked for the y, I still might use this equation because it, you know, it's not that bad, but you know, remember, anytime you go down the algebra path, there's a, a chance for a mistake. For many of you, that mistake would have happened right here with those two negatives because your brain kind of sees the negative that's already there and kind of accounts for it without remembering that the negative that's in the equation is it's kind of its own thing and needs to come along. So uh, even if you know this equation, there is still a chance for an error, whereas if you just graph it, it's kind of hard to mess up. So um, I do think the graphing calculator is the way to go if you frequently make careless mistakes.